So in this video, we're going to talk about React Sketch Canvas. This is a freehand vector drawing component for React using SVG as your canvas. We're going to build something similar where you can draw on it. You can erase. We're going to implement simple functionality like redoing, undoing, and clearing, and also saving this at the end as an SVG or export it as an image. So let's dive right in. We're going to build this project on top of our next chat CN template. There's a link in the description to access the template. There's also a video on the channel where I walk you through how to set up chat CN in Next.js, which results in the starting project for our project today. And also a theming in chat CN. We've recently had charts added as components to chat CN. Uh, link in the description for the video if you're interested in that. But from that point on, we're going to install the React Sketch Canvas library. So you can head to the documentation, you can go ahead and install this library. And all you need to do in our homepage is that I've created this Canvas component inside of our components. And inside of this Canvas component is where we're going to implement our Canvas as you can see here. So first things first, we're going to import React Sketch Canvas and the corresponding types from this library we just installed. And from this function component from a high level, just ignore these functions. We're going to go through them step by step. But from a high level, what we are returning is really this React Sketch Canvas component. We are setting a width. There's different props you can pass to it. You can reference the props you pass. In the documentation, I'm not going to dive in the documentation. There's a link in the description. You can just review um, or use it as a reference. But here I'm going to explain most of the functionality that would you, you would require for a canvas anyways. So we give it a height. We give it, we give it a, a width. And I am holding a reference to this canvas in this use ref up top here. This is going to expose some functions for us to do um, to switch between draw, drawing modes like the pencil or eraser redo and undo, which we're going to talk about in a second. Now for the stroke color, we're holding it in a local state, enabling the users to actually change the stroke color. Sorry, I was on the erasing mode, so clicking on the pencil is going to now reflect that. We're going to look at this implementation in a second, but from a high level, let's just finish up here. We have the canvas color as transparent. You can change the canvas color to any hex value. So let's turn it to red. Your canvas color would change. So we're going to keep this as transparent. And then as far as the class name, you can just pass class name like any other React component to this component and pass in your required styles. The only thing I would note is that you need to pass this important if you're passing class names like so to override the current styles or the styles that this component chips with, you have to pass in this important. For example, I'm changing the border radius. I'm changing the border color on dark and light mode. Our application also comes with the dark mode. It's coming from the template that I just said. Uh, if you want, you can pass in a style tag as well, just like any other React component, and pass in your background color and whatnot, like so. I prefer to use the class name and my Telvin classes. So this is the basic functionality of bringing in a canvas into your application. So let's continue by this color picker for our stroke color. So up here, we are holding this as stroke color state, which initializes into that purple color from Tailwind. And we do have this canvas ref set on the ref here. Down here for the color picker, I'm rendering a button. This comes from chat CN. I'm setting the size to an icon. And on click, I'm getting a reference to this input of type color down here. And I am just clicking on it to open this color picker. The reason why I'm doing this is if you just render this input which I have set as SR only. This is only for screen readers. There's not much styling that you could do to that button, but instead of styling that input type color and fighting against the browser specific styles, 
I've just set this as a screen reader only and then I styled my button over top of it. I'm holding a reference to this input and by clicking on it, it just opens up this color picker. Simple way to implement any button instead of that other default button that shows up here. And on change, I'm just changing this stroke color state that I'm holding up here, as we just saw. And then I'm passing this stroke color to my canvas. Pretty simple stuff. So that's the first action that we can take by changing the color. Now, as far as the drawing mode, there's two drawing modes. One is the pencil when you can draw. The other one is the erase mode where you can just erase. Now, the way it works is that if we come up here to handle erase click, um, first off, I'm holding a state for erase mode, but I'm also referencing the ref that I've passed into my canvas. And as I mentioned, this exposes some functions such as this erase mode, which if I set to true is going to now enable the erasing mode on the canvas. Similarly, if I click on the pencil icon, First, I'm going to change the local state. Then I'm going to also reference my canvas and then call the erase mode and set it to false. So these two are really toggling between different drawing modes. So just before I go to the actions, I want to show this drawing mode buttons as well. I have a button with the pencil icon that's hooked with the handle pen click, another button with the eraser icon these are coming from Lucid React icons. And then this is hooked to my handle eraser click event handler. Now, I'm also disabling it depending on whether or not I'm on the erase mode. And this is the local state that we are holding. So as you can see here, now the erase mode is disabled because I am on the erase mode. If I click the pencil icon, I can start drawing and that becomes a disable button. Now, as far as the action goes, let's just review the first button. I have this undo button again, wrapping a button around my undo icon, and I've hooked this up to handle undo click. So let's go up top. The handle undo click is just referencing our canvas and then calling the undo function that's exposed to this ref. Similar for redo and also clearing the canvas. There's also a reset function. Again, you can reference the docs to see what other props are exposed from your reference. But pretty much, we are following the same logic of undoing, redoing, and also clearing our canvas by hooking this buttons up to different functions that are exposed through our ref that is passed to our canvas. Now, the last thing I want to show, which is interesting, is this save button. Now, what this is going to do is going to call this export as an image function on our reference, on our canvas. There's two functions. One is export image. The other one is export SVG. So you can export your drawing as an image. You can pass it the image type that you want, or you can export it as an SVG. So I'm hooking this up to my handle save function. So let's look at this function. The handle save is going to call the export image function exposed on the canvas ref. So if you're accessing canvas ref .current export image, I'm passing the image type as PNG. This is going to be returning a promise that resolves in a data URL that you can use uh, to download. So I'm turning this event handler or handle save into an async function so I can await this function. Once I have the data URL, I'm going to create an A tag. This is how you can download an image inside of your web app. I'm also assigning to this object that I'm creating an href which is set to that data URL, a style of display none. So I'm creating an anchor tag, but I don't want it to display on the page to so display none. And then there's a download property on that a tag. That's the name of the file that's going to be downloaded on the user system. I append this anchor tag to my document. I click that link, which is going to in turn download the image and then I remove it from the page. So therefore I'm not ending up with a bunch of a tags in my page. 
So let's just test this out. If I click on this save button, I don't know if you've seen the download upload there because of the way that I'm recording. You may not be able to see this actually. Uh, you can open it up. It saves it locally. Again, you won't be able to see it, but I can confirm that it is working. And that's a wrap for this video, folks. It was a short video implementing a canvas in React and pretty much all the functionality that you would need from a canvas in terms of drawing, picking different colors, undoing and redoing and clearing and exporting whatever drawing that you have as an SVG or image. There's more you can do or there's more functionality exposed from our Canvas instance. So definitely check the documentation if you need something else. If you have any questions, like always, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.